Hey there, West Michigan. Thanks for watching 13 plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barons. It has been a hot and humid start to the weekend across the region. And as we get our way into tomorrow, the humidity and the heat will give way to storms, some of which could be on the strong side. So we're going to keep a close eye on the forecast. More on that coming up today, though. Beautiful weather. If you could stand the heat, this picture here from Grand Haven. Thanks to Mike. Great sunset out there. People fishing on the pier, just enjoying the nice weather and the calm waters that we had across the region today. Of course, we always love to share your photos here at 13 on your side. You can send them to me on social media at meteorologist Michael Barons on Twitter and Instagram and meteorologist Michael Barons on Facebook. Now, when it came to those temperatures, they hit a high of 90 in Grand Rapids, 89 in Kalamazoo, 85 Muskegon in Holland. Those temperatures above average for this time of the year. But a bullseye with the forecast hit 90, told you 90, brings our accuracy streak to 11 days in a row with just two misses in the last month of forecasting. When it comes to tomorrow, temperatures are on the way down. That's why 13 weather ball is lit up in blue as cooler temperatures are in view. That weather ball also blinking bright with rain and storms both in sight. View the 13 weather ball, of course, sponsored by Countryside Greenhouse of Allendale. We're looking at temperatures just past 10 o'clock that were still very mild. In fact, hanging around close to 80 in Grand Rapids, mid 70s to low 70s for the rest of the region. Dew points hanging around close to 60 means that humidity is in the air. Dew points will be on the rise as we head toward tomorrow. That'll be ahead of our chances for showers and eventually thunderstorms as we head through the day on Sunday. You can see temperatures in the afternoon much cooler thanks to the storms coming through. We'll likely see a brief warm up into the 80s before those storms start to take hold. Some of those storms may be on the strong side, though, so we're keeping a close eye out on the risk for severe weather. There's a marginal risk level one out of five that covers most of West Michigan for Sunday, particularly from about midday through the afternoon and evening. Our biggest concern will be wind with secondary threats of hail and heavy rain. We're going to keep a close eye on any of those storms that form in the next 24 hours. Speaking of which, it won't just be Sunday that we see storms. The storms will be the strongest on Sunday, but a continued risk for showers and possibly some thunder will go into Monday as temperatures keep sliding downhill. Look for a high near 71 come Monday afternoon. Compare that to the 90s today and of course the 80s that we'll have across the region tomorrow. Those storms that are heading our way, they're to our west this evening and they're already causing severe weather. You can see out toward Iowa and down into Illinois, there is a area of strong to severe storms at this hour. This will be part of that system that again works its way toward us as we head through the day tomorrow. So let's go and track it our by hour. You can see here we're looking at pretty quiet overnight tonight, partly cloudy skies that will turn mostly cloudy by sunrise tomorrow. We'll see our first wave of showers, possibly some thunder as we work our way between sunrise and about noon. Once that pushes out, that's when we have to keep our eyes out for some stronger storms. We're not expecting anything on the strong side before the noon hour. It'll be afternoon that we see those risks come in. If we get into a period like this where we see a break in the cloud cover, we can get some extra sunshine, some heating of the day in here. That could lead to some stronger storms in the afternoon. If the first round leaves behind more clouds than the models are thinking, then we'll see a diminished threat. But either way, we're going to watch for that second wave of showers and storms to really start to flare up as we head past 1 o'clock and in between 1 and 5 for most of the region. After that, the storms start to push off more toward the east and they're out of the region as we head towards 7 and 8 o'clock at night. As far as the rest of the evening, scattered showers, maybe some thunder will still be in the forecast. Nothing severe, though. We'll keep an eye out on Monday for more scattered showers, possible thunder. Again, not expecting severe weather on Monday. That threat going to stay confined to Sunday. We'll keep the rain chances in the forecast until early Tuesday morning when things will finally start to dry out again across West Michigan. Taking one more look at the severe threat for tomorrow. We'll time out the concerns for you. Could see a heavier shower early in the morning, but the severe risk again, not going to really start to come into play until we head toward about one o'clock in the afternoon. Things again wrapping up by seven to eight o'clock when it comes to our risk for wind and possible hail. Taking a look at temperatures across the region tomorrow, of course, before those storms come through and cool us down, we'll see 80s on the lakeshore. Breezy conditions across West Michigan we will be looking at more 80s for our northern zones, low to mid 80s for those afternoon highs. We'll see temperatures reach to around 85. Grand Rapids as warm as 86 in Kalamazoo. 13 on your side, 10 day outlook. 
Temperatures dropped quite a bit after the rain and storms were in the low 70s to kick the week off, but we recover very quickly. In fact, mid 80s return by the end of the week when another chance for a few showers and storms rolls on through. We'll be back up into the mid 80s with more humidity just in time for the 4th of July holiday. The 13 on your side beach and boating forecast sponsored by AAC Credit Union. And now it's time for your beach and boating forecast. Those storms coming through tomorrow will kick up a little bit more wave activity. We're expecting waves of one to three feet across the West Michigan Lakeshore for your Sunday. Those wave conditions, of course, spurred on by the stronger winds. that will be around 10 to 20 miles per hour, regardless of the storms. That'll likely chop up some cooler water as well, because we've seen water temperatures warm into the mid 60s and even 70s as of Saturday evening. Once that lake starts to stir up a little bit more, we'll likely see these temperatures drop but the overall warming trend should continue. And speaking of the beach, you may be thinking about taking your pet to the lake this summer, but you'll want to take a close look at the water before you let your furry friends jump on in. Ariane Daytill from our Verify team tells us what to look out for. Summer is here, and that means your family might go swimming in lakes or rivers to beat the heat. And yes, your pets too. But before you or your pet jump in, listen up. State officials and pet owners have issued warnings over the years about blue-green algae blooms after dogs died from suspected poisoning. So let's verify. Is some blue-green algae toxic to pets? Our sources are the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Washington State Department of Health, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, and VCA Animal Hospitals. If you see a body of water that appears to have green paint or pea soup floating on top, that is likely cyanobacteria, also known as blue-green algae. It usually blooms in the summer and early fall. Most blue-green algae blooms are not harmful, but some can produce toxins that can be deadly to pets. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency says blue-green algae blooms can lead to poisoning in pets if they drink from or swim in contaminated water sources. Dogs can also ingest the algae by licking it off of their fur after a swim. The CDC says animals can die within hours to days of swallowing those toxins. So we can verify, yes, some blue-green algae is toxic to pets. So how can you tell if a blue-green algae bloom is toxic? You can't. VCA Animal Hospitals say it's impossible to tell whether a bloom contains toxins just by looking at it, and that all blue-green algae blooms should be considered toxic until proven otherwise. So be vigilant. Don't allow pets to drink from water that has bluish green scum on the surface or around the edges. And if you think your pet swam in water with blue-green algae, make sure to rinse them thoroughly with clean water afterward and contact a vet immediately. Those blooms can also affect you. Our sources say exposure to high levels of blue-green algae and their toxins can cause diarrhea, nausea or vomiting, skin irritation, and difficulty breathing in humans. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Till. Finally tonight, check this out. An 84-year-old Cadillac woman has lived most of her life above the clouds, and now she's rushing to reach a goal that she's had her eye on for decades. 13 on your side's Nate Belt has this inspiring story. For plenty of people, the idea of jumping out of an airplane is absolutely terrifying. But for Kim emmons nor whether it was her first time or her 500th time, the sky is where she's the happiest. Did you ever lay on the ground and just watch birds flying around and watch how they stop and how they go and catch the wind currents and stuff? That's what I used to do. And now, at 84 years old, Emmons Knorr flies right next to those birds. She was first exposed to skydiving when she was just five by her uncle, who trained to jump from planes during World War II. He stayed in my room. I wrapped in his parachute for two weeks and slept in the closet in his parachute. <laughs> Fascinated by the idea, 15 years later, December 13, 1959, finally made my first jump. Instantly, she fell in love. It was a long wait, but it was fun. It was worth it. Since then, she's racked up 559 jumps, a number she'll tell you. Not very many. Many of those were in competitions. This is the uh, World Championships in 1962, and I was on the first U.S. women's team and we won the gold. In honor she carries with her 60 years later. Standing under the American flag and hearing that national anthem, <laughs> it's a big deal. 
But today, she has one achievement she still hopes to reach. A thousand challenge. With around 600 more to go, she added three to her total at Skydive Grand Haven this weekend. And you can see the lake, and it, it's just glorious. A glorious sight that her younger self, staring up at the clouds, would have loved. I don't have to watch the birds anymore. <laughs> we did it! We did it! Come here! In Grand Haven, Nate Belt, 13 on your side. And definitely the best of luck to her in reaching that goal. Of course, now that you're up to date on the latest forecast and some weather stories and inspiring stories from here around West Michigan, you can always find more online at 13onyourside.com or by downloading the 13 on Your Side news and weather apps. For now, thanks for watching 13 Plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Behrens.